Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another session for our journey into the learning more about the Security Operations Center. Last time we had a quick overview about the introduction into the Security Operations Center and the ecosystem around it. But today we are going to deep dive into one of the aspects of the technology part of the SOC. And the topic is the SIM solutions itself. So the agenda is we're going to discuss about what is the SIM. We'll have a brief introduction into the history of the SIM. And then we'll discuss the internal working of the SIM, which I have called as SIM functions. How does SIM operate? What are the things that are actually uh, doing what they are supposed to do? And then we'll discuss a little bit about the architectures, how the industry standards and the vendors that are the same vendors that are actually um, uh, using those same functions and putting them in their own solutions. Um, brief introduction about the terminologies that they are using. And then different deployments method that uh, are currently in practice. So what is SIM? S-I-M, SIM. This is the technology that was initially introduced for the management, uh, for the uh, IT team to manage their logs. So what the SIM, the Security Information Management, refers to is the collection of log files and storage in a central repository for the later analysis. So SIM is therefore just a log management solution the analysis part over here is not much of the analysis that we see currently in SIM solution, but more of the function of this security information system was just to collect the logs and put them in one place uh, for the uh, IT administrators for if they ever need it, because it only deals with the storage analysis and reporting of the log data that the log data is being saved, uh, is being saved. So what is SEM or a SIM, whatever you want to call the security event management. It is more of processing the data in the real time to monitor, correlate and notify the security events that are being generated on a regular basis. So in this one, you identify, you are actually working on the logs that you have collected, like identifying and gathering and monitoring and correlating the logs and then basically you are actually making some sense of the logs that you have, have actually gathered through uh, security information uh, management. Although there are two uh, distinct areas, but, the, um, but later they were merged and they were called as the SIEM solution or some people still call it SIEM. So whatever you choose. So what exactly is SIEM? It's a tool that collects, aggregates and normalizes the data and analyzes it according to the preset rules and presents the data in the human readable format. So they were initially developed because of the inability of the IT department of any organization to deal with the large number of alerts that were being triggered by different parameter devices. And uh, so they, had, they were using the log management, but they had only limited capabilities and uh, they could not analyze or they could not do the real time monitoring. So they had to come up with the idea where they could collect the logs from all the parameter devices, from all the endpoints, whatever they have infrastructure in their system, in their environment and collect those logs at one repository and do the analysis on that and trigger the alerts from that. So if you see over here in the picture, we have presented the SIM solution as a funnel where we are actually putting in the logs from all the resources. And then output of that is the alerts, the, the alerts that make actually some sense for the administrators, for the security guys, um, uh, that actually tell the story that what exactly happened in those logs. One rule that we have to remember is for the SIM solution that it is a garbage in, garbage out. If we are going to put garbage logs into the SIM solution, we are going to get the garbage also because if there's a garbage logs, the logs do not have any value. They do not have any um, uh, material that is actually making sense of anything. We are not going to get a valuable alerts. So some of the, uh, so uh, just to summarize some of the discussion that we had so far is log collection. We collect the logs from the different devices aggregate it in the same solution. And based on the rules that whatever you have defined, it will trigger alerts. 
but now moving onwards, we are moving more towards the artificial intelligence and we are now adding the response part to it also. So we'll discuss that later. The same function that I would like to discuss today are the collection, aggregation, parsing, normalization, categorization, enrichment, indexing, and storage. So for, from the discussion so far we had, we, we, the collection and aggregation makes some sense, but we will get into the deeper discussion about the parsing and normalization uh, in just in a minute. First is the collection. So if you have a SIM solution, it won't make any sense if it's just sitting over there doing nothing. Definitely we would like to do something about those logs. We want to do some kind of analysis on that. But how exactly are we going to collect those logs from the, because we have different type of uh, endpoints in our infrastructure. We have endpoints, we have uh, workstations, we have servers, we have firewalls, we have databases. So there are different methods to collect the logs from different, um, different log sources. One is the agent based, where the agent, the term agent that we are using here is actually a piece of software that will sit on that particular log source and read the logs that are being written by those, uh, the, the application or the server, whatever you're trying to read the logs from. So the agent collects the logs from each device. Some of the agents actually parse it over there and some only just forward the logs. They just read the logs and forward the lo those logs to the next machine or the next component of the SIM that we will discuss afterwards. So in the Windows servers, web servers, and other file-based logs, mostly we will be using agent-based logs. Agent-based logs examples would be the Syspawn, Annex logs, or OSIC. Then we have the agent-less, where we are not using the agent. In fact, we are using some other methods to actually send the logs to the servers. What that could be, for example, now with the um, coming up of the cloud environments, we have APIs available, where APIs are available and we have to actually um, uh, call the APIs to collect the logs. Then we have the firewalls where you can send the, directly configure the firewall to send the logs to the, uh, your collector or the log server using, sys, uh, using, uh, using syslog. And then switches and the Windows host WMI are the other methods that you can use if you do not want to use the agents. Next part is the aggregation. It is basically the process of collecting all those logs from different computing systems, be it firewall, be it endpoint, be it server. The purpose is to collect all those logs at one point and then parse them and try to extract the structured data and uh, putting them in a format that is easily searchable for, uh, for later analysis. The, the two different methods that we discussed uh, in the previous slides also was the push and the pull. In the push, the logs are being pushed from the source to the server. And in the pull methods, the source itself is not going to do anything. It's just going to make the logs available for you. The server is actually going to call the log source and going to read from those uh, log sources. So that's like a pull that the server itself is going ahead and reading the logs from XYZ place. Whereas in the push, the agent itself is sending the logs or some other, uh, or the source itself is sending the logs to, towards the server. The next server, the next function that we are going to discuss is parsing. It's a bit of a technical detail, but it's important to understand because once we have collected the logs and they are now aggregated at one particular server, the logs are now in a different format Firewall has different format. Windows itself has different format. Linux is going to send us logs uh, in a different format. Even within the firewall, we will see variations in the log formats. So what exactly is the parsing doing? It's a software component. It's basically a regex that is actually finding those patterns. And these are defined, these parsers are defined for particular systems because we know that let's say XYZ firewall is going to send us logs in that particular format. 
So vendors would define a parser, they would write a parser for that particular log format to read and extract the data from that one. For example, over here, we have one example for um, a failed password for the invalid user. Uh, this is an SSH uh, log. So if I see at the line where it shows me a timestamp, I don't know what is app server, then I have some SSH with a random number and then it says failed password for invalid user. And I believe this ice cast might be, um, might be yours, might be some uh, username. And then you have the IP and a port. But I don't know if it's a source port or uh, it's a destination port. So how do we make sense out of it? And this is just one log line, which we are finding difficult to read. Imagine you have full log files coming in from different formats, different log sources, and you have to analyze those and you have to read those. It's difficult for a human eye to go through them. So you have to write parsers. What exactly is the job of the parser? They are going to extract the data from those log sources, from the log lines, and map them according to their, um, uh, according to their uh, value to the event fields. For example, app server is the host, the process itself is the SSHD. Source user would be the IceCast2. The source IP is 1072109227, and the source port is 57238. Now, this, if I see at the bottom of this slide, this will make a little bit of sense. Okay, now I can make a story that maybe it's a host app server that user IceCast2 is using this 1072 IP, and they are trying to do SSH on that. So once you have the logs in the in the past format, next is the normalization and categorization. So the normalization is a, a bit of a tricky part, but it merges events containing different data into a reduced format, which contains common event attributes. Now, if you look at this, this is a Linux log server, sorry, SSH log line which is being mapped to host process source user and source ip but these fields might not be available in let's say a firewall log where i am looking at the network connection it might not be available in the um, windows logs where i am actually logging in so what they do is the vendors have defined the normalization in a way that they will pick up all those common attributes among those all log sources and try to define those. And then based on those common event attributes and the event actions that are uh, present in those, they will do the normalization and categorization because this helps them to search all across the aggregated log sources and the aggregated logs to make any uh, analysis, make any rules, run the rules and trigger the alerts. So categorization actually involves adding meaning to the events. So I see that the source user is using SSHD and the host server is app server, but what exactly is it trying to do? We can't make any sense. So the normalization will actually uh, merge the events into the reduced format of the common event attributes. And the categorization part is giving the actual meaning that what exactly this log line is telling for um, uh, to the analyst. It will identify the log data related to that particular system event and then maybe it could be authentication or a local remote operation, anything. For our example, it is authentication, login, or SSH login. Moving onward, we have enrichment. Enrichment is basically adding more value to the logs that you have collected. Uh, this needs a bit of an extra work on behalf of the system administrator if he defines the uh, all the parameters in his system uh, quite well. This could be done. The enrichment could also be done from the open source threat intelligence and different other sources of intelligence that maybe we will discuss in some other session. The, because what we are doing, trying to do is we are trying to give more meaning to the logs that are, have been passed and that have been normalized. In this case, it could be that the source user is an administrator. 1072 is an internal IP, definitely, but is this internal IP belongs to DMZ 
group or does it belong to some uh, um, administrator? Which VLAN exactly this IP belongs to? These kind of information you can add using this enrichment feature. The next is the correlation rules and the alerts. The correlation rule is ag actually the brains of the same solution, I would say, because it is actually doing the analysis part. It is checking those logical expressions that you have uh, added that are going to be run on all the log sources that have been passed and normalized. For example, if the computer has a virus, alert the user. In this case, we would say if somebody, even XYZ user, tries to do some kind of login on my app server, trigger an alert. So this is the part that the correlation rule is actually doing. Other examples would be if on my server, app server, there are multiple login attempts, and then there is, and these are all the uh, failure login attempts, and then all of a sudden he succeeds. Maybe it's a brute force attack. So I would define a rule that let's say if there are 10 uh, failed login attempts, and uh, within five minutes, and then afterwards, there is a login success event, please trigger an alert. And that alert is going to be uh, the trigger, trigger for the security analyst to start their investigation. The next function of the, um, the SIM solution is indexing. But before going into the indexing, if you see in the picture, we discussed the collection, we discussed the aggregation, but we did not discuss the processor. What I have done is we have all the topics that we discussed after aggregation. For example, we discussed the um, normalization, categorization, parsing, and then the last one, uh, correlation rules, alerts, enrichment. These all come under the umbrella of the processor. It could be one machine, it could be multiple. That depends on the architecture, how you have defined it. But this is the processes that is actually doing all those things. Indexing, as we know from the concepts and the DB, that is actually a solution for making the search available for the analysts, the quick search. It, effectively, it is effectively search and explore log data there is a need to create an index of common attributes across all log data. So if we have the index, we can do the searches faster and uh, we can uh, do the full scan of the logs data um, much faster than if the data is not indexed. And the last part would be the storage where this, you are going to put all the logs, the raw logs that you're getting into the storage the purpose would be the compliance. Sometimes you have to have these um, historical, you have to look at the historical records. So you would like to keep uh, the logs in the storage. Uh, they can be kept as a hot storage or a cold storage. The other terminology that we use is they can be kept as archive or in, uh, in the, um, the archived or, uh, or readily available. The readily available would be, let's say, that totally depends on the choice or the policy of the organization. It could be six months, three months, one year. That totally depends on uh, on your own preference or the compliance that you are or the regulation that you are uh, trying to achieve. The cold storage would be um, the one that are not readily available for the search. If you have to look into those, you will have to extract those back and put them into the same solution. Let's talk about a bit about SIM architectures. So for this, I'm going to take help from the uh, diagram that are readily available for, uh, for, uh, for the different SIM solutions that are available in the market. So remember, the basic rule of the SIM functionality is the same. The parsing, normalization, categorization, uh, correlation, enrichment, how they do it, what are the terminologies that different SIM solutions are using? It could be different. For example, in QRadar, they are saying the event data. We, in layman term or in the, uh, for, to just to understand, we said the log sources. But there they are saying, we are collecting the event data from all those log sources. Log sources could be the proxy servers, Unix servers, firewalls, or Windows servers. But when they are collecting it, they are saying it's a event data. So if the data or the logs that are coming from the network 
parameters, for example, the uh, parameter devices, for example, the switch or the router, they call it the flow data. So then there is a server that is actually collecting and aggregating those logs. What do they call it? They call it data collection, event collector or the flow collector. So they are two different server machines. Event collector would be collecting all the event data coming from the firewall, Unix servers or the other endpoint servers. The flow data is being collected by the flow collector. So they have two machines. So uh, the one is collecting the flow data, other is collecting the event data. What exactly is doing other than collecting the data? It is also parsing and normalizing those data. So all this collection, aggregation, parsing, and normalization is being done by the data collectors, event collectors and the flow collectors in the first phase. Then afterwards, it goes to the data processing. Who is processing those data? Event processor and flow processor. How do they define the processing of the data? That is, they are going to run the custom rules and they are definitely going to push them into the data storage. And then you have the data searches where they are indexing your all the logs and making them available for the searches. Then they are tr triggering based on those custom rules. They are triggering the alerts and offenses. They are providing the user inter interface from where the analyst using the QRadar console access the graphs and the reports and he can see the alerts, he can see the details of the events that are happening. And then if he, ha if he has to do the data searches, he can also go directly to the words the, instead of looking at the alerts, he can just do directly the search for the events. So this is for the QRadar. The next window we are going to discuss is the logarithm. This is another security vendor that provides SIM solution. And here, if you see, you have the hosts and you have the network devices, all of them are sending the logs towards your data processor. Everything is being done by the data processor. Data processor is the guy who is actually receiving those logs, aggregating those logs, and then processing them. After the processing, what it does is it's, it's sending the processed logs to the AI engine and the raw logs towards your indexer, which is actually making them available for the search. And then the events, how do they define the events? That's another discussion. For example, what is a log and what is an event that is defined by the after normalization, they actually run some more rules to define what is an event and what's the log or raw log. And that is being sent to the platform manager. And then there is another event that is going to work from the AI engine to the platform manager. Then AI engine actually runs more uh, rules on top of those processed log messages. This is their, uh, I would say user uh, UEBA, user and uh, event behavior analysis. I, I, I hope I'm right. Uh, that's the analysis. And the AI engine is running all across different log sources and creating those events. And ultimately they are reaching the platform manager from where one can access their uh, searches, logs and everything. The last part is the alien vault. They define their terminologies as sensor and the server. The sensor is the main solution that is actually collecting the logs, doing the parsing, doing the analysis, and then it is sending to the server. The server is actually running the uh, rules on it, on it, and then triggering the alerts. And then they are able to see the alerts from the web interface. The logger is their uh, long-term storage device where you can send the logs. How do we deploy these SIM solutions? Totally depends on the requirements of the enterprise where this is going to be deployed. If it's a small enterprise and they are not going to integrate lots of log sources with their, with their SIM solution, for example, it's just they have four firewalls, a couple of uh, endpoint machines, uh, maybe a couple of servers, and then a couple of additional endpoints. Um, I think all in one is going to be their best bet. What is all in one? All those functionalities that we just discussed, parsing, correlation rules, normalization, everything is packed in one software or one hardware box, depending on the requirements of the clients, they will give you either the software or the hardware. 
but that is just one thing that you have to deploy and that will do your job. But if you have more requirements, then you have to have, you can't use all in one because they are going to be a performance issues or scaling issues. So the all in one is for those environments where you have less number of log sources and you have very small operations. You can see the alerts, you can see the doing, you can see the investigations, everything from this one particular server. The other would be where you have huge number of uh, log sources. You have um, maybe 100 plus endpoints, 100 plus servers, um, maybe 10, 15 firewalls. These are just random numbers that I'm using. The point is the number of logs that you're going to collect is much higher, then you will have to use maybe different machines, one machine for the collector, one machine for the processors, same for the indexer, another one for the storage. Now these things can change depending on the complexities of the enterprise infrastructure, and depending on the requirements of their, uh, um, uh, their project, how do they want to deploy their same solution? Maybe they need a couple of uh, processors. Maybe they need large number of indexes. Maybe their goal is compliance. So they will have to need put more storage servers. So this comes to, and this is very uh, flexible when it comes to this, because the solution that your vendor or your security guy or the SIM administrator is going to propose will depend on the requirements of the, and, um, on, of the enterprise. So these are just the examples for, uh, for guidance that you can use. Uh, with that, we come to our end. We discuss the SIM itself, a little bit of historical background, or how did the SIM came about? What are the different functionalities of the SIM? And uh, then we discuss the different vendors architecture that they provide, how they are using, and what are the terminologies that they are using for those basic or the common functionalities. Uh, we discussed QRadar, we discussed logarithm and alien word. And at the last, we discussed what are the different deployment method and in which scenario, in which case we are going to use which deployment method. With that, we come to an end for our, uh, this presentation. If there are any questions, please feel free to reach us and uh, please feel free to um, comment and we will be more than happy to respond to you back. Thank you so much.